Classic Ristos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can be a member of the Shannon's Club, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, and Gun Lake Quarries. G'day, I'm Fletch, and this is Classic Restos. Come with me now to see what we can find in Musselbrook, New South Wales. After many hours of driving, I pull up outside a fairly unassuming house, but I can smell man cave and I can smell restored cars. Plus, it's a dead giveaway. Look at the hot rod flames on the letterbox. There's bound to be something down the back. Oh, well, this is my man cave. Oh probably 20 or 30 years worth of collecting, just through cars mainly, shows and runs and things like that, picking up memorabilia on the way. And I'm retired now, so I've got more time to organise things and go to runs and go away for weeks at a time and enjoy the cars. I've lived in Muscle my whole life. I've had this place here ever since we got married, so I've probably lived here about 40 years. So, uh, hence all the collection. <coughs> I've done all my cars, in, started out in this shed and then uh, I built a new shed to build the last couple, but most of them were done in this shed. It all started mainly by uh, the wife, I suppose, Lita, she's a real collector. So she started with a couple of cabinets and things and I'd always collected posters from runs and they were just piled up and then we plasticised them and put them around the place and it sort of just grew. This is my 1935 Ford Coupe. Uh, I've had that on the road for oh, 30 years, I suppose. It's been redone once, but uh, yeah, a lot of miles when the kids were growing up and a dicky seat, they all loved that. I was king of the kids. I've actually put a back seat in it where it didn't have for the children to travel with us and the front's a uh, couple of sass bucket seats and it's air conditioned and everything. It's quite comfortable to ride in. And it's got a 350 small block with a turbo 400. The engine's got a fair bit of work done to it. And pick up over here, it's late. Uh, it's been on the road about three years, three and a half years, I suppose. And I built that when I first retired to tow the caravan for me and mother to trip around. Our first trip was to Perth. Uh, we spent eight weeks cruising around in the pickup with the caravan on the back. I did my apprenticeship as a motor mechanic, so I'm a qualified motor mechanic. and. Uh, I just enjoy playing, like the, the yellow pickup, it's all late model, it's LS with electronic gearbox, independent jag, rear end, four wheel disc brakes, air conditioning, power steering, cruise control, just drive, like driving a late model car in an old body. You might be thinking why I've got Chevs and LSs in, in my Ford motor cars, it's mainly because I want looks and reliability, which uh, takes it into the next shed and my next project. It's an FC ute I'm building up, putting a 307 Chev again in it. <laughs> yeah, I know, looks and reliability. <laughs> the ute is more or less how I found it. It was sandblasted in our project somebody had started and never ever finished and they wanted to sell it and I happened to be Johnny on the spot so it looked good enough for me to play with. So here we go again. I'm doing all the mechanicals first before I start on the body. I've Fitted a HR front end with uh, P76 discs, uh, VP Commodore steer rack, shortened that and put it in. I've shorted a uh, HQ collapsible steering column. I've made a set of extractors to go inside the subframe, not out through the inner guards. And I'm getting there slowly. But I suppose one of the most spectacular things I get, I suppose, is the original FX I've got sitting on the hoist in here. It's an original Musselbrook car. Uh, it's only got 57,000 mile on it. It's all original. Uh, I redid the brakes when I got it, they were gone, but 
the paint, the upholstery, everything's original. Uh, the bonnet pulls a bit of number eight wire, which was on it when I got it. Uh, the previous owner, two old ladies actually had got indicators put on it, but otherwise it's totally stock and just a wonderful thing to drive around in. Oh, another thing about this FX, it's, it's got a country pack and that included, that involves a lot more body deadener underneath the car. It's got steel covers over the leaf springs and actually sits a bit higher. The leaves were set higher and the coils on the front are a bit higher. The interiors, the leather's cracked, the, the seats are comfortable. It's just stock standard. It's just too good to play with, if you know what I mean. The doors shut, shut beautiful, the windows wind up lovely. It's, it's just all there and it's wonderful. Well, that's a little story about my man cave and what I've got here. And uh, I'm just amazed that Fletch showed up here, so all good. Lovely sunny day. Thank you. My life is hot rods, designing them, building them, and racing. If you're into rods or customs, you'll know what I mean. It's all about passion, purity, and soul. Customs and hot rods like the SoCal Roadster is what we do. And insurance for cars like ours is what Shannon's do. Rods, customs, and even your daily drive. Call Shannon's on 134646. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Like us. Heron Forbes Machinery House has been family owned and operated for over 85 years and it's easy to see why. Planning on welding? Look at these welding tables and clamps, air compressors and different air tools, sandblasting cabinets, through to spray guns. Everyone is welcome at Machinery House. There are competitive freight rates around Australia and you can buy online at machinerywhouse.com.au. So remember, Hare and Forbes has the range. With me now have Tony Mataggart from First National Real Estate here in Musselbrook. How are you doing, Tony? I'm going well, Fletch, yeah, going good at Musselbrook. That is great, mate. Beautiful spot here. It's as pleasant as you'll find in the Upper Hunter. I do appreciate it. Now, Tony has played an integral part of having uh, us here uh, for this episode of Classic Restos here in Musselbrook. Um, just quickly, before we start talking about this uh, classic car behind us, Tony, a bit about Musselbrook. How's things going out here? The industries here, which is mainly mining and farming, they're essential industries and they've just been cranking it. You go back a long way with real estate. Uh, your father before you, uh, 61 years, um, and yourself now 40 years uh, here Scary with real estate in Musselbrook. Yeah, 100 years, it scares me. Thanks, yeah. for, thanks for adding that up. Um, yeah, no, it's... Uh, <laughs> It's a, it's a real uh, honour to be involved in this town for so long and yeah. have, have the heritage we've got in Musselbrook and uh, yeah, and, and the opportunity for you to come up here and see the diversity that this valley offers. You know, we're standing here in a, a uh, olive grove here, we've got vineyards, we've got horse studs, we've got mining. Yeah. The, the town's just buzzing with, uh, with ideas. The Pukara Estate here in Musselbrook, uh, with the, the olive trees behind us, this is just beautiful. It's a, it's a stunning environment. Uh, you can even smell the, uh, the, the vinegar being made over there in the, in the little factory. But even to be able to walk over to the trees behind us and, and see the olives growing, wow, what a backdrop. A lovely little spot and, uh, and it's part of the, uh, I guess, the texture of the valley. There's, there's yep. lots of little hidden secrets up here. Absolutely. Um, Tony, now, you the real estate agent uh, that, you, that you're with now, with the family history, you guys go back to the, the 1800s, right? 1886, Fletch, yeah. So it's, uh, it's a long barrel to push and, you, as you said, my father and myself, 100 years in the game. And it's interesting too because not just real estate, but aside from that, the auction, some of the auctions you do, I've seen some of the photos. Talk about cars in barns and, and old memorabilia. Some of the uh, auctions you've done out here in the country. Wow, and it attracts hundreds of people each time. Yeah, we've, uh, we've been blessed with a lot of auctions in the days of old with uh, a lot of old barn finds and we've, we've found ourselves uh, in some uh, pretty much amazing settings where you'd open a shed door and you'd be gobsmacked what, what people have been collecting there. So the, they've ranged from you know, a sale we had at Merriwell last year which had a uh, a run of Chevrolet cars, there were Douglas motorbikes, there was some old memorabilia there. The sale went for nine and a half hours and we backed it up with another sale that was about the same. Now Tony, you were good enough to bring this car out here to this gorgeous uh, place here at Pekara Estates here in Musselbrook this morning. Now it's a car that I've never had before on Classic Restos, a British car, 
1934 Rover. But not only that, it's a shape that was only here in Australia, very, very rare. What can you tell us? Yeah, well, um, this motor car, they freighted them out in a box pallet and they were reassembled in, in Adelaide there at the Richardson Sons factory. And a doctor ordered this particular car and he, he spoke to the group that were putting it together and he wanted a what was called a doctor's coupe, wow. which was a vehicle, I guess, for two seats rather than taking passengers. I think he was uh, thinking that if someone was ill, it would be best the ambulance pick them up rather than him. They certainly looked upon, uh, they went down the, the American line for inspiration. When you see 34 here and you, you look at some of the traditional roadsters of that same year, you can definitely see where Rover has, has taken on some shapes here. The dicky seat, as you say, uh, the first one that I've seen um, in, a, in a, a UK, in a British car of this era. Now, the interior, Tony, wow, talk about a step back in time here. Original seat. Yeah, I, I haven't really doctored any up in the old girl. I think that's the way she is, the way she should stay. Mm. So, yeah, the old leather seats, it's uh, they're starting to show a bit of wrinkle, a bit like me, I guess. But uh, <laughs> they, they tell a story, and I think that's the story I'm happy to, to portray. Now, a feature of Rover was the wheel on the dash on the right-hand yeah, side. Now, walk us through that. Yeah, the freewheeling device is their signature item of their vehicles back from about when this car came into manufacturers. And they're a fuel efficiency device, and basically when you turn the big wheel on the, uh, the dashboard, it puts the car into freewheel, which is uh, akin to turning this motor car into a billy cart. So hang on when you're going down a hill in freewheel, because she tries to get away on you. Well, not so, try, she does. That's just angel gear. It's angel gear and prey. So <laughs> you, you just hang on for the ride, Fletch, and it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, it doesn't the, matter how good your brakes are when you're running an angel gear on this old girl. That's the first time I've heard angel gear actually um, professionally promoted through manufacturing of a yeah. car company. Yeah, well, I think that's, uh, they probably didn't call it that, but uh, <laughs> there's a couple of aspects wow. of this old car that required assistance of the angel, yeah. and the other, the other thing that was a bit of an angel inspiration was the uh, the uh, old suicide doors on the girl. A very stylish feature that continued way into the 60s and uh, obviously Lincoln went down that road too of keeping the suicide doors in manufacturing into the into the 60s so it was certainly that uh, 30 year bracket there of I guess an air of sophistication to have suicide doors attached to a car. Another thing the British did with their cars is displayed the horsepower values on the front of the emblems on the grill. Here we have 12 horsepower right? That's correct, yeah. It's probably not much uh, not much more powerful than your lawnmower in the backyard. Well, to be honest, on. well, that, yeah, well, that's actually 19.5 horsepower, yeah. my Husqvarna right on, yeah. But yeah, I often think of things like that too, and how the British cars used to snap rear axles and they, they had they had 10 horsepower. It's, it's incredible. So when I say what powers it up front, we know it's going to be a four-cylinder engine, but what can you tell us about the engine? Yeah, well, it's, a, uh, it's about a 1,500cc engine. It's an uh, overhead cam engine it's a pretty standard little motor overhead cam you yeah. say yeah right okay so, well there's an advancement in 34 so um yeah so it's water cooled of course and yeah look it's it's the original engine this car's only got just on 60,000 miles on the clock wow so it's uh it's been parked up in a showroom in adelaide for about a 30 odd of those years wow yeah so it's uh, it's a bit unique in that respect too absolutely hasn't been running the clock your headlight covers, I have to make mention there, um, it's got DOC written on the top of those, obviously being a doctor's car once upon a time. That's a nice little touch that you've given the car. Yeah, well, it's my mother-in-law. Thanks, mother-in-law. She, uh, she made them for me and, yeah, she was lucky enough to, to find a pattern in her, her sewing box to actually basically mirror the shape of the car. Mm. And DOC, as you said, was the first name of the car because it was a doctor's car and yeah. that stayed for 86 years. Tony, it's been a pleasure. It's uh, been worth um, a few hours' drive out here to, to meet yourself and uh, to uh, showcase the, the beautiful Upper Hunter here in New South Wales. And if you are watching and you haven't experienced the Upper Hunter, uh, it's a beautiful part of New South Wales to come to. It really is. A couple of weeks ago, we were in Cowra, now Musselbrook. Uh, really, these, these areas have got so much to offer, Tony, don't they? Yeah, and that's why we enjoy selling it. So come up and buy a house <laughs> off me and I might be able to buy another car. Good on you, Tony. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Bye, mate. My name's Deanne Douglas. I'm the manager at the Musselbrook PCYC 
10 years ago, an amazing group of people from the Upper Hunter Motoring Association walked in our door to give us the support. To, they'd heard about a program we were running, which is called Licence to Drive. Um, this program is where we pay for two professional lessons for our young people um, for their licence, and then we put them in the car with mentors to help them get their hours up. It's quite a costly price for families, so to be able to do this as a free program. This amazing group of people have raised over $200,000 over the last 10 years for us and last year we were very fortunate we were actually able to you'll see the cars behind me we we're able to upgrade our cars and to get new cars so we have a, a manual and an automatic and um, to keep this program going we've had 248 young people actually get their license through us just a really big thank you to the guys from the Upper Hunter Motoring Association seriously guys thank you so much for everything that you do for us and the young people in this community I was 16 when I first saw her. Loved her utterly. She was so sweet, so perfect, still is. She's got a whopping great two-stroke engine under that gorgeous aerodynamic body. Insurance? Well, Shannon's, of course. No one knows your passion like Shannon's. That's why we offer special limited usage rates and even club plate cover. So call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Got a classic? Got to be insured with Shannon's. Why not pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call for a quote and a chat regarding a policy that suits you best on 134646. And the Shannon's Club is awaiting you as well. For more information, visit shannons.com.au. Well, to organise a country trip such as this takes a lot of planning. And before I go any further, it's a special thanks to Michael Sade, the Shannon's representative for Newcastle North and Western Regions. Now, Michael put me in touch with this guy here from the Upper Hunter Motoring Association. How are you doing, Cole? Very well, th thanks, Fletch. That's good, mate. You've been, uh, you've been running around. You've been busy. I, I want to thank you for um, a relatively short notice to put a few cars together and uh, show us a little bit about what you guys are doing here in Musselbrook. Glad to do it. Uh, really happy to see you here. It's been fantastic. We ne we've got some nice cars and Car Club does a fair bit of work for the community and that type of thing. And, and um, we've got a couple of uh, car restorers that are very passionate about what they do which is really really good so i keep saying this time and time over again the country areas and what the car clubs stand for well from from everywhere what what they stand for uh down here with uh, pcyc uh without you guys you would they wouldn't have the cars that they've got for the for the people on their learners coming through uh and that's just that's just one thing that you do but you've organized some cars here today uh obviously you're a gearhead yourself might i say you've, you've got a good shirt on there cole uh it's just pretty special shirt really mm. i've been with shannon's um, doing car shows, stuff, events and that for nearly seven years and it's been really enjoyable. Now you've got this uh, this Lancia here, what, what can you tell us about this car? Uh, well I've owned it for uh, six and a half years, it's a 67 model, uh, Series 1, really a basic car but it's had some HF um, rally bits and pieces added to it to make it look a bit bit fancier but it's a really nice car enjoy driving it that is awesome now before i let you go just quickly about your club uh, tell us about how many uh, members that you've got and uh, if you're watching and you want to be uh, come up a member of this club we've got 85 usually runs between 85 and 90 members and from memory i think there's about 128 uh conditional registered cars listed by the club that they look after. If you would like to see a large list of car clubs, check the Shannon's Club for more information. There's a, a ton of material there on the Shannon's Club and a list of car clubs is one of them. Cole, thank you so much, mate, again for uh, rounding up some cars here for today's episode. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you. Thank you. And ho we hope to see you at one of our car shows. That'd be fantastic. Well, we can't go wrong with an original GTS HQ Monaro, can we? How are you doing, Steve? Yeah, good, Fitz. Yeah, how are you, yourself? Good, mate. Good. Thanks for coming along. Oh, isn't it? I love it, mate. I enjoy showing the old car off. Yeah, you, you hate getting this out, don't you? Yeah, I do. Hate it terrible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, I, 
Honestly, I do not know the story, but I have been told this car comes with a special story. Would you like to share that? Huge story. Um, this car was um, my uncle's car. He bought it probably 74. I remember actually going into the Holden Garage, local Holden Garage in Musselburgh, and driving it out of the garage with him. Yeah. So I, um, as a my uncle, I then pled with him for the next uh, 10 years trying to get it off him and he finally succumbed and uh, sold me the car. May I ask how old you were back then? Uh, I bought the car when I was 24, okay, so yep, yeah, I've had it uh, 8 years and uh, what I did was foolishly as I sold it. I thought it was a great idea, I'd buy myself another car and yep, yeah, but I've always known where the car was, resented selling it and I've chased the car until I finally got it back about 3 years ago. Matching numbers, original engine, original dra transmission, in fact as the young hood I probably was, um, mate, it got modified in my process. This is like a limb to you, this is a, this is a family member, it's an heirloom, you, you're, you're never going to part with this. Never going to part it, as much as I tried to convince my wife it was an investment, she said you'll never sell it, so um, how can it be an investment? So yeah, but, but, uh, good on you Steve, thanks for coming on mate. Yeah, good to see you again mate, alright. You, you certainly, I don't, I don't think this car park here has looked as good for, for some time, it looks car awesome car with the cars here. Yeah. Yeah. No worries, yeah, all good mate. Alrighty, moving on to the British Ford camp now. How you doing, Wayne? I'm fine. How are you, Fletch? Good, mate. Good. Beautiful little 1962 Ford Angle Box. What a nice little car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 105E. Not many of them left. Well, it's in good nick. Oh, it's had a lot of work worked under it, but yeah, yeah it's getting there. Yeah, and Wayne, what inspired you to, to buy the Anglia? Oh, I had one when I was 17, yeah. but um, we'd modified it quite a bit. Yeah. This one's dead standard, so yeah. A lot of guys over the years have done a lot of things with the Ang uh, the Anglias, haven't they? Oh yeah, look, at my age they were they were raced, hill climbed, um, rallied. Yeah. So we're talking engine, uh, not even a one litre, right? No, nine ninety seven. Jeez, they got close, didn't they? Almost, yeah. <laughs> they, they nearly made that one litre capacity, didn't they? Yeah, but it notices it, especially <laughs> on the hills. Uh, I alluded to earlier about it being in good condition. It really is a fine example of one of these cars. I like the interior. Uh, the first thing that, that jumped out at me was uh, the cleverness of the dashboard, um, uh, not unlike Chevrolet many years ago, where they prepared the passenger side for the steering conversion for the export market, which makes perfect sense. Yeah, both sides are identical, so... Not a not a big problem to change them over. Yeah. So Wayne, being a part of this wonderful fraternity that you're with, with the Upper Hunter Motoring Association, what's your role there? I'm the secretary. Been there for about six years now. Good on you. You're doing some great stuff. Oh, it's a good team. We've had a lot of people involved for a long time. Um, they've set the club up well, and hopefully we can keep going and yeah. be successful. Good on you, mate. You belong to a, a beautiful part of New South Wales, and I really appreciate you coming along here today, oh, Wayne. It's a pleasure, Fletch. Yep. Yeah. Good on you. That was great. All right. Take care, mate. Thank you. Thank you. And as the weather starts to close in, we progress. How's this guy here, Ian? Now, Ian, you've already been on this episode, mate. What's going on? Oh, yeah, I was on it yesterday, actually, with <laughs> me, uh, me shed and me collection. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Ian, as you know, featured with his man cave, he just heard about the action that was going on here today and he had to turn up in one of the cars that we didn't actually cover when we did his man cave. Now, what an incredible car. This is a very interesting car, and the reason being is that it is pretty old. Now, this was done 20 years years ago wasn't yep, it Ian? Yep, 20 years ago I'd done the road yeah. yes. First. Now keeping in mind 20 years ago that, that was around about the, the the turn of the scene when this type of modification to vehicles was it had a, a lot of wow factor it surprised a lot of people um, it's been done a lot since over the last 20 years but to see an early car like this still looking so good after all this time. Yeah yeah no it uh, when it hit the scene it was very popular very uh, high tech in them days, but yeah. Okay, so what are we looking at? We know it's a Dodge. Is it a 49? There's a what's the deal there with 49 and 50, Ian? Uh, yeah, but uh, I call it a 50, but in the States they actually come out in 48, transferred through to 50 out here. It was a right hand drive Australian car. Okay, tell us about the engine and drive line on this. Uh, it's got an LS in it with a 4L60E box and 9 inch diff. Ian, it's such a radical modification. Just run us through some of the things that have been done to this car. Uh, it's The chassis-wise, it's got a HQ subframe under it, so it's HQ front end, HQ power steering. Uh, it's been chopped four and a half inches, uh, shaved, all the door handles gone, remote doors, airbags all the way around, different tail lights, LED tail lights, sunken tail lights, French headlights, DeSoto grille, the guards are all been lengthened to make it look lower and 
Good on you, mate. All right, well, once again, Ian has featured uh, before early on the episode with your incredible, uh, your man cave at home. Love the Holdens you've got there and that original FX there on the hoist. What a what a gem that is, eh? Mm. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. She's a good old girl, yeah. Thanks again for being an integral part of, of this episode, Ian. We really do appreciate it, mate, and thanks for coming to the PCYC here this afternoon. Thanks, mate. No worries, Fletch. Thank you very much. Well, I hope that you've really enjoyed this week's episode of Classic Restos, filmed in Musselbrook, New South Wales. And part two will be on next week's show. Speaking of which, until next week, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can be a member of the Shannon's Club, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, and Gun Lake Quarries.